Today we are starting a new format. I'm going to do a three part series reviewing my hotter $250 uh, deep run, which I had a few weeks ago. And we're going to go over roughly 100 hands per, per session. So we're going to have the early stage, the mid stage, and then the final stage, which is about the final table and heads up. So I would, uh, I would say we jump right into the action. A lot of you guys have been recently requesting this kind of format. So I decided, okay, I'm going to pick a tournament, which is kind of mid stacks. Um, so we're going to talk a lot about concepts, which we want to apply on low stakes. But of course, I also want to show you how you should approach higher stakes tournaments. So let's jump into it and start right away. 10-7 suited, of course, very easy for it. I'm not going to go through all no-brainer spots. It's more some sort of um, yeah, live slash review, uh, sharing my thoughts with you. Um, so trying to go over as many hands as possible. Of course, if needed, I will go more in-depth, pause at a certain point and maybe use our Ranger or uh, Pyro Solver or any kind of other solver tool. Ace 2 suited, we open race from the cutoff. Playing against the small blind is completely different than playing against the big blind. Keep in mind that he's defending a way tighter range, but yet a more defined range. It's very Broadway heavy, pocket pairs, some suited aces. So more many board textures, we can define his range pretty well. Um, in general, it's a board texture where your seabed frequency should go down by a lot, probably somewhere around 50 to 60%. So if I have, let's say, pocket deuces, pocket threes without backdoors, I would just, uh, yeah, without backdoors, I would just give up, seabed my draws, gut shot hands, and of course, all my value hands. Ace to suited should be fine. We don't block fives or fours or sevens or eights, which we were going to make for it right away. We have a back to flush draw. Um, one over card, so I think c betting is totally fine here. I don't mind giving up as well. This is an interesting card, and if you think about the hands we want to bluff with, um, King Jack gets there, but we often c bet there as well. I think this is a typical spot. Let's say if I have um, Ace 10 in small blind shoes, or Ace 9, or 9 8, probably 9 8, I'm going to call with the double gut shot, but or 9 7, or Ace 9. Ace 10 without without a gadget, I will probably just check for it. It's a spot where people just don't really have a proper bluff, proper bluff frequency. So you need to pick some hands that are quote unquote random bluffs. Um, King 8 suited would be a mandatory bet here. Um, but those are also just four combinations, right? The suited combos. So we have King 8. Um, then we probably have Ace eight, uh, ace jack, we might only have 50% of the time since we also want to bet it sometimes on the flop, especially with the flush draw, vector flush draw. Um, so there aren't really so many bluffs we can have. Um, we still can have all the queen jacks, queen jacks, um, which we were pot controlling, which is fine, or Queen nine, queen eight, uh, maybe even some queen seven suited, which I would be a fine open race from the cutoff. <laughs> then we have all combinations of um, 10 nine suited, uh, nine six suited, pocket nines. <laughs> um, we can now value bet ace 10 or even jack 10. Yeah, jack 10 is close. I don't mind checking jack 10 here or king 10. Uh, what else, what else? Yeah, that looks very reasonable. And as you can see, we have 36 value combos and 16 bluffing combos. And even our bluffs have really high equity. So especially for many river spots, let's say if a jack gets there, if a heart gets there, if an eight gets there, if a king gets there, you are not really having any bluffing range at all. So you want to have some random bluffs here. Um, of course, we have to be very careful. And I think it 
it's definitely reasonable to add in some um yeah some some of these hands uh not like 100 percent of course because then we easily over bluff but um let's say as, as i just said if, if a jack or king gets there and we bet again what can we really bluff we improve too many straights two pairs and your bluffing range consists of zero per it's, it's, it's not not really existing and that's a spot where let's say you have a bluff catcher as a small blind and you check call and you get to the river and you face a bet it's one of these spots where one say that your opponent can't really have any natural bluffs and against these kind of opponents you can just easily fold um, whatever you have like let's say you have queen jack and the turn is a river is a jack and you don't know what to do or you have like um 10 9 suited or whatever kind of weak two pair you have on the river well let's say you bet and he calls um river is an eight or jack or a king um you can just easily check for it for most opponent they're not turning a hand like ace 10 into a bluff or 10 7 right which like 10 7 and hearts they just check it back so those are the spots where you should heavily overfold. Um, so yeah, from my perspective, I really would like to see a bet here with ace twos. Again, we're not blocking any of his threes, fours, fives, sevens, which he's folding right away. Um, but this should be a mandatory spot to bluff on the river, I hope, if he, if he, if he checks to us. But once he bets, I think, uh, yeah, we just have an easy fold. Um, if he checks to us, I would probably just bet around half pot. Really just attacking 6x hands, like 6-7 six, suited, 6-5 six, suited. Pocket 3s, 4s, 5s, 7s, 8s. These kind of hands, maybe a weak hand, like 10-8 suited, which he can certainly call from the small blind. Um, and yeah, again, it's really tough for me to have so many bluffs. I mean, I do have all the ace-8s, ace-7s, but most of them I'm betting on the turn, actually, so I don't have them. <laughs> So it's really just ace five, ace twos. Pocket fives. Um, yeah, against a three bet, it's less than four X. Um, we are relatively deep still, so easy call here. And we also call once on this flop, um, this board texture. Um, here I would always check. Um, it would be horrible, horrible if you face a check jam, which you can easily do with all his over pairs. Yeah, river is um, very, very easy check, and also a very easy bet here. And I want want to talk about briefly talk about a mistake that a lot of players do. If you block, the most likely draws we can have, you don't want to check this hand. Um, same would be if he has king queen with queen and hearts. You just want to go ahead and bet. If he does not have the hearts, so let's say he has ace and clubs, king and spades, it must, makes much more sense to bet, uh, to check, sorry, because he's not blocking any of the flush draws we could potentially bluff with. So with this hand, you definitely want to bet and um, he, we, can all, we can have all the king, queen, king, jack, king, ten and hearts. And actually when I have a king here, I mean, yeah, probably we should bet with King Jack, King 10 suited, but um, we have so many eights, nines, tens, jacks, queens, which we're just gonna check back. It makes no sense to bet. We can have something like eight, seven, eight, seven suited, and we do have to call with some of these hands, and he's missing a ton of value. Since we mostly call suited kings preflop, it's not like that we have a ton of king as here on the river. He also has a king, so it's blocked, and it's really just the uh, King X and hearts. So there are only two or three uh, hands like King Queen hearts, King Jack hearts, King Ten hearts, maybe King Nine hearts as well. So he's missing a ton of value. So if you think about protecting your range and you want to check stronger hands, hands in order to quote unquote be balanced, then you should always choose hands that are not blocking your opponent's draws. If you block the draw, it's more likely that your opponent has a mate hand. Hence, you want to go ahead and bet. And most of my made hands are bluff catchers, but not hands that have the incentive to bet myself. 
it's now it's a bad outcome for me if i would have bet the journey would have checked for it but we can never know he could have also had pocket queens which he would have, would have went as a check jam for on the turn and then we could have said well we realize our equity perfectly pay, played so don't be so results orientated that's just how it is um yeah jack knight suited um would be a fine open race don't mind it Pocket Jacks is the open race. Um, would be probably also reasonable if he three bets to just four bet and go broke. A flop we definitely don't want to see that three way. Um, just trying to check it down and easy forward on the river. I really like the sizing. Our ranges are so capped and uh, if I have ace five here, I probably have to call, but of course it really sucks. Um, also, maybe even have to fold some ASX. It's just the perfect sizing. He has the most ADX hands here. Uh, he can even go for a large overbet on the river. Pocket aces, no action. Um, I sometimes like to mix in some flat codes with ace king off. Same speak here. What I see over and over again is that people tend to three bet ace king off and just flat call ace king suited which makes absolutely no sense ace king suited is much stronger so you want to go ahead and three bet this hand and just flat call ace king and rather play a smaller pot you have way more nut potential with ace king suited given the flush so if you want to distinguish between uh, flatting and calling uh, <laughs> flatting a three betting range you want to take the suited hands and call and play a smaller pot with the off suited hands Yeah, we flop kind of decent. I think betting small is fine, checking is fine. Doesn't really make any difference. Um, if I would, if I would choose my bluffs here, would be pretty much ace jack. My flush draws. Keep in mind with three way, what are really the hands we can go three streets for value? It's like. King Queen suited, which uh, it's only two combinations: King Queen Hearts, King Queen Diamonds, um, Ace Queen suited, Ace Queen off. I'm three betting. Like I'm mixing it up with Ace Queen off and Ace Queen suited. Um, three betting Ace Queen off here then is is just a bluff. Okay, one thing I have to add here, if we talk about our value range, right? So if ace-king is our value range and you want to distinguish between flatting and three betting, you just want to uh, flat with ace-king and three with ace-king suited. If we now talk about ace-queen, there's a little difference because ace-queen is pretty much just a bluff and it's strong enough. Ace-queen suited would be fine as well, but it plays strong enough as a flat call. Ace-queen off just needs more protection. Um, so this is the hand you want to three bet more often than than ace queen suited so there are exceptions of course but in general and the same concepts apply for blinds versus versus button if you want to have a bluff three bet you want to three bet more often king 10 suited or king king jack suited than king jack and king 10 off because your opponent is going to call very often he has position and you want to have a high playability and high raw equity the possibility of making straights flush is really good and pushes your EV by a lot. Of course, again, there are exceptions, um, but here it doesn't actually really matter that much because the ace queen, ace king are extremely strong. And if you want to go ahead and uh, split your, your value range with ace king into three betting and, and flatting, then you should pick ace king suited or ace king off. It would never be. Uh, a big mistake so that's very very cherry picking what we're doing here right now since um, both plays are totally fine it really depends how you construct your range and how you uh, how you estimate your table table dynamics in-game table selection and so on and so forth um, bottom line here is always try to pick higher equity hands as a bluff free bet and don't do this quote unquote i want to stay in the comfort zone bullshit where people just want to flat the suited hands because they play so nicely post flop and pick hands to bluff three bet because they play poorly post flop you actually want to reverse it and you end up being a big pot with shit hands and you have no idea what to do 
So we have an easy bet here on the flop. Um, we block heavily the ace-queen combos. Uh, yes, he can have some queen-jack, queen-ten pseudo combos, um, but our king is actually really strong um, and we bet very small. So we also get some value from ace-jacks, ace-tens, which would just check back. And river, we have a very easy value bet. Yeah, same spiel here. He can't really have good flush draws he can bluff with. So we just go ahead and better ourselves. Maybe get a hero call from jacks, tens, nines, puts us on a flush draw. I ate seven suited, I really like my fort here. Uh, yeah, nine six. Depends who's opening. It's a close, it's a close one. Now we're just five handed, so there are less anties in the middle. So I really don't mind the fort here. Bock up kings, we three bet. Eight times suited would be standard open race. No action. Ah, uh, yeah, five four suited is a good hand to ice race against the small blind complete. Oops, sorry. Let's see, no heal and folds. We take it down. Sweet, sweet little pot. King man off from the cutoff. Um, it's fine to open. Get immediately punished. Ace three, ace two is very easy for you. Never want to open race those hands from these positions. Eight seven off would be an open complete. Unfortunately, we can't go for it. Um, I remember this guy has been very active at this point in time. Um, it's definitely reasonable all in here. If he has some bluffs in his range, uh, I think either ways it's fine. It's it's you can go all in, you can fold. Wouldn't wouldn't just. I'm not a big fan of calling. I think the hand, the stack to pot ratio is too too bad to make that play. Yeah, ace check off. Hand we want to raise forward with goes through. Here, nothing we can do. Six seven suited. Um, yeah, I actually would like to see myself re-jamming here. Oh. Unfortunately, um, I don't. It's a good hand. We have a ton of forward equity. And even if he calls, we have reasonable equity here. So in these kind of spots, um, my re-jamming range Um, if I oh, if I think about my standard rejamming range, it would be of course any suited ace, uh, any suited Broadway ten nine suited, any pair, uh, king jack off, ace ten off, um, yeah, something like this, so around twenty percent. That's always a good orientation. You should. Always try to yeah rejam at least twenty percent of hands from from the blinds. Uh, King A two should be as fine as well. Um, and if you know someone as just opening, yeah, that he's clearly open raising too many hands from late positions in that particular spot, that would be more than thirty percent from the cutoff. Then you should rejam wider and uh, yeah, probably even rejam those hands, and then you end up being around somewhere twenty five percent. And then you have opponents that keep open raising the same hands as they would with 100 big blinds. And then you can go even, even wider than that and just be very, very aggressive in these kind of spots and regen something like this. And yeah, regen around 30% of hands, which is totally reasonable then. So that's maybe if, you, if you're on my course, I'm always trying to teach the very fundamentals of preflop, very solid ranges, but also the tools and the knowledge of when to exploit your opponents, how to exploit your opponents. So you always maintain this approach of playing flexible ranges and not seeing everything as carved in stone and following an ABC strategy and then playing the same range against every single opponent, which yes, in the long run, it gives you a decent EV, but it's not going to give you that crusher ROI um, if you play every single time the same. Uh, one second, my holy manager is frozen.
Yeah, easy call here with the ace queen off. Fortunately, we not holding. Would be a very easy first in jam. A7. Ooh, okay, that, that is for sure a mistake. Uh, that was a misclick. That is a very easy all in here. Um, the range I would be jamming with here. Um, any ace. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, we have seven big blinds from hijack. You can easily jam any ace here. Even if it's slightly minus EV, it's like our situation is so f fucked up. Uh, yeah, something like this, around one third of hands. And if you consider someone as, maybe as a recreational player that does not know how why to call in these spots, especially from the blinds. I mean, Team Maha probably has to isolate hands like Queen Jack suited against our violin or King 10 suited, then we should start jamming a little wider here. Um, yeah, maybe some more suited kings, but yeah, I think we're on one third of hands. I mean, at the end of the day, if you jam 32% or 35% of hands, doesn't really matter. If, as long as you know around one third of hands, you're doing really well. Uh, yeah, that's a fucked up spot here. Um, the thing is, there's no big blind in the middle and the pot is protected. So, yes, there are 500 in the middle, but I'm actually just jamming for the difference between the 35 chips and the anis. And I think the anis are 30 chips anyway. So, I'm, I'm risking 1,700 chips to win 100 chips. Right? And also, or like 150 chips. And also the, the, the rest, the side pot, I still have to win the showdown against him. So ace 10 off is, is not as clear as, as many people of you think. And I, um, yeah, I think folding is, it's definitely close, but since there is no dead money, literally no dead money, that's what we try to achieve. I think we should jam fairly tight here. Uh, what happened here? I s oh, sorry guys. Um, yeah, hold it manager sometimes is a bit buggy. 10 8 off first in would be a jam. Yeah, we're not getting any first in spots. 10 9 suited. Yeah, that sometimes happens, and we just try to. Yeah, maybe now we just go for it. Suited jack, three big blinds. Three way with a suited hand, you have decent equity. So we go for it. And we actually had really decent equity, but rebuy and we're back. Jamming 10 big blinds here. And this time we're gonna bink it on the river. And we're back at 20 big blinds. So a lot of push forward. And in these kind of tournaments, you really need to do a lot of work with Hold'em Resist Calculator IC Miser. If you don't use Hold'em Resist Calculator IC Miser and you have never been studying short stack spots, do never play turbo tournaments. I promise you, you're losing in the long run. It's even better if you take the money, you go in the casino and you play roulette. You probably have a higher win rate there than playing turbo tournaments. It's just not possible. You're playing against opponents that are playing really good in short stack. They're studying those spots on a regular basis and they know what to do and you're competing against these opponents. And you're gonna make pushes which are forwards, you're gonna make forwards which are actually pushes and it's gonna cost your win rate a lot. You don't know which hands to defend with, you don't know which what to call against re-steers, which hands to re-steer with. So if you're not studying on a constant basis with these tools, don't play turbo tournaments. This advice will save you a shit ton of money. On the other side, so if you constantly study with these tools and you really know your pushing ranges, calling ranges, rejamming ranges, you're gonna have a big edge over the field. Yes, the variance is quite high in turbo tournaments, but I think it's still possible to make a decent win rate. 
I mean, even at Tobor Sudden Ghost over the past years, you have seen those same regulars over and over again. Yes, there is variance involved, but the top 20, top 30 regs in these fears are well, pretty much always the same. You will always see the same faces and the same names uh, at the top. Why? Because they study the game. So it's definitely possible. Poker is not dead. You just need to sit down and put in the hours. Um, Jacket suited would be a reasonable hand to open limp with um, or either open race. I think it's still fine. In general, with 20 bigs from the cutoff, um, hands you want to limp with are obviously hands that can't really race call with. Mixing in some traps, even with some ace king, ace queen combos, is totally fine. Um, race folding, these kind of hands. Um, are really really good then we race call all the green ones of course open jamming the light blue ones yeah race call is these kind of hands ah sorry 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 let's take race call green sorry it was green so the green ones we are race calling with um, race folding some of these And it's not like perfect, but you see in which direction I'm going. In order to now define my range really accurate, what I would do is I would really break down the frequencies. I would open Holden Resource Calculator, I would put in the spot, and I would check my race ra raising range. I only look at my raising range. I check the green ones and the blue ones and see what my opponents can reach out. The very first result that Holden Resource Calculator gives you is always the Nash range. So if before you put in the numbers, before you break down the range, you always see what is the Nash equilibrium. Then you have an idea what the blinds are supposed to go in with against your open race. Is it 20%, 50%, 25%? So now you start designing your open raising range. You pick in, uh, you add hands for your race call range, you, you, you balance that with a few race folds, and then you click on analyze, and then it gives a new equilibrium for the blinds to go in against your race. If let's say now it gets way tighter and they have to regen suddenly super tight, your raising range is simply too strong and you can add in more bluffs. The same goes in the other direction. If your opponents suddenly can regen 50% against your raise, you're probably raise folding too much. That gives you an orientation about your range. It increases your range awareness. And this is the not the only, but one of the best ways to study your short stack open raising uh, ranges. And to really bring them on the level when you play against the good opponents that you know how to play your range, you don't need to worry if you get exploited and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, these kind of hands are, are fine as a limp. We can also mix in some suited aces. We can limp forward way more hands than race forward because we invest less money into the pot. Um, I think the blue ones here is race fold is are fine as well. Um, yeah. And then you can also sprinkle in your population reads, reads on your opponents. If you see someone, or well, let's say two out of three opponents, they're just their three bet stat is very, very low, then you go ahead and race fold more hands, right? Instead of limping king eight suited, you raise it. Queen eight suited, a seven suited, and you raise fold all those hands. Totally fine. So then it's up to you to de um, to deploy this uh, flexible approach of adjusting your ranges over and over again. And yes, of course, you never know what your opponents are up to 100%. So we're using tendencies and tiny reads, and that's how we do it. Or you can do the same with ICM uh, IC Miser. Uh, but I'm always using Hooded versus calculator that's, calculator, that's why I'm advising it here. Yeah, and then of course, I mean, we can still add more hands here. Um, especially the suited kings are really strong on that position. Uh, adding a few more race folds here with the off suited aces. Shouldn't, we shouldn't open any. I think with 20 bigs playing around 27% from the cutoff, is very, very reasonable. 
uh, 26, 27, 28, maybe in a certain scenarios, 30%. That's, those are the num numbers you're looking for. And here, that is, you can see now we raise the off-suited commas and the suited commas. You might know this concept from post -flow. When you become shorter, there's a little difference than playing deeper. That means protecting your equity. You're quite short anyway. So let's say with, with a lower equity hand preflop, the mistake you can potentially do aren't that big given that you're short, right? If you're 100 big plans and you constantly play low equity hands preflop and you overplay them, the mistakes can cost you more money than playing short stick. Um, here, as, as, a, as, a, as a short stack, it's more important to think at least also to consider protecting your equity. Race holding a hand like king nine suited or king ten suited over and over again can really hurt your win rate. Whereas race folding ace nine off, king ten off is not that bad simply because it has way less equity against an all in range. That's why we want to add more of these hands here. If you reverse that, and you want to imply a limping range for 100 big blinds, you should reverse that. Why? Because you can always call a 3-bet with king-9 suited, jack-10 suited, jack-9 suited. So you're going to realize your equity. Makes sense, right? So this um, investing more money with high equity hands applies pretty much for deep stack poker, even like 40, 50, 60 big blinds. For 15, 20, 25 big blinds, poker pretty much becomes a protection game. Uh, yeah, we can't call this all in. The hands I would call here would be probably, I expect most people to jam any pair, which I think is a mistake. I would jam like fives or sixes and better. Um, so my calling range would be sevens plus, ace 10 suited plus, ace jack off. Yeah, that would be my range. Uh, Jack 10 7 suited would be standard first in jam. jam. Yeah, ace queen suited. We just okay, that, that was actually a really, really tricky spot here. Um, I expect small blind, which is a good high stakes regular, like sitting goals. You also used to play a lot of sitting goals, so he's definitely aware of what hands to re jam here. Um, so I expect him to regem at least any suited ace, any pair. The big blind, I assume he will be over calling with, I mean, we can even check it out in, ah, unfortunately I have poker stars open. So you should always close poker stars. Uh, I think that is really, really good that poker stars is not allowing to use these tools while the client is open. So if we look it up, and these are also, if you're a beginner, for those who just discovered poker, Power Equity Lab is one of the tools you also need 100% in order to, like there's no way around it. You need an equi uh, equity tool in order to estimate the equities you have. So I expect him to at least rejam something like this. And Big Blind will overcall I mean, they know me, they know that I would probably also have a race forward range, something like this. Um, and then we get 32%. I mean, we have a little bit of a side pot, but uh, let's le le neglect that for now. And you see, we need 27. So with ace queen suited, we have to call here. It's just, we're crushing small blind range so much. And yeah, he had ace five but we split. Um, let's see with ace queen off. Yeah, even ace queen off we have to call. Uh, ace check off would be full. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? If big bang goes all in with ace check plus, maybe once in a while with ace ten suited, there's nothing really we can do with ace check off there. So yeah, we split it up. Jack seven suited. I would jam Jack nine suited here. Uh, we have 11, 12 big blinds. 
So it's not like we're super frustrated. Ah, sorry. I went the wrong way. <sighs> I'm so stupid. Uh, yeah, pocket three, same should be here. Um, it's not very profitable. Um, it's in the best case scenario. Maybe slightly, slightly plus EV. And I see that over and over again where people constantly jam those hands. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it into Podium Research Calculator real quick in order to show you um, why this is not a jam. Just need to find the hand history. So if you guys um, are not familiar with Podium Research Cal Calculator, this is the tool, and what you do is. You go in your database and um, you are choosing the hand, then you click on copy paste or copy the hand history, then it copies, and then you just click on basic hand because it's just a null in situation, push or fold. If you wanna analyze a race fold or race call or race this scenario, you go advanced hand, but we just have a basic hand scenario. So paste it from the clipboard, you see it enters all the stack sizes, the blinds. Make sure it's, uh, to choose Chip EV because it's an early stage tournament situation. Um, and you can see our stack size here, 8,430 chips. Um, I mean, it's uh, it, it counts the antis as well. So that's why we have a little bit more here. Then we click on finish and then it's running the, the play. And you can see, yes, it is a Nash jam. And this is something where I always tell people don't follow Nash. First of all, it's very marginal. And my orientation point, what I hold on to is, if I look at the EV of Aces, which is 5.5, um, that is the maximum EV I can, I can achieve, right? I can't, I mean, if I think about my entire range, if I, let's say, go in with aces and someone calls with ace, queen off, of course, my EV is way higher. But on average, with a fold equity, the potential outcomes, my EV is going to be 5.5 in the long run. So 0 0.09, given that I can still reach EVs like 2.51, 2.66, 4.50. Um, I mean, we can even, let's say, yeah, it's chip EV in big blinds. Uh, maybe I, I think in IC Miser you can also change it to, um, to the chip value. Um, but yeah, it should be fine. So, I mean, making five big blinds with our stack size is uh, pretty decent. Um, so we definitely don't want to jam twos this year. We definitely don't want to jam threes. Uh, with my twelve big blinds. Um, I definitely want to skip those very, very, very marginal spots and probably at least have like five to 10% of the EV of aces, uh, maybe around 5% with, with 12 big blinds is totally fine. So it should be somewhere uh, with the EV of ace 10 off, um, ace eight, ace nine suited. Um, these are the EVs I'm looking for. So king 10, jack 10 suited, probably fine as well. These are the first hands I would consider jamming. If we also adjust the ranges a little bit, uh, for the blinds, I think like, I mean, the guy to my left, he might fold some of these hands here. Uh, we can adjust it a little bit, but I think other than that, uh, this guy with his nine big blinds has zero incentive to fold any of those hands. Um, small blind. Yeah, when he perceives me jamming any pair, I also think he would j overcall this range and big blinds range. Yeah, maybe here a little bit tighter. Um, but still, um, this is not the EV we wanna look for. It's still way too marginal. And also consider, um, I mean, it's just one player that folded, so actually it's not that important. I was about to talk about um, card removal effects. 
Um, but I think that is a very, very realistic scenario. Also keep in mind, if you're, we often want to race aces and kings, right? So people might expect that we race aces, kings, queens very often instead of jamming. So they will certainly know that these are not part of our range most of the time. And thus they have no incentive to, to tighten up their calling range. I mean, if you, if you see like three, four guys that are very tight sitting behind, then it probably reaches the degree that justifies an all-in here. So yeah, my jamming range would be fours, fives and better. Um, ace 10 off, ace nine, ace eight suited, king 10, queen 10, jack 10 suited, king queen suited, king jack suited, king queen off, queen jack suited. Yeah, that would be my range I'm jamming here. And I definitely see people jamming even for 50 big blinds, deuces and threes from UTG and MP, which is clearly a mistake. Uh, if you do that, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be surprised at why you might be on a downswing or very, very high variance. Ace 10 off here, very easy rejump. He opens, he will have hands like King 10 suited, Queen 10 suited, Jack 10 suited, pocket threes. Okay, I mean pocket pair he has to call, but lower suited aces. So with our 10 big blinds against his range, um, I don't care. Now, if he folds these hands, I'm fine. If he calls, we're going to dominate him often enough. We're going to flip with all the dead money. That's totally fine. He calls with queen 10 suited, which I think is also a mistake. Um, people always think they're committed uh, with 10 big blinds and they can't really race forward with 10 big blinds, which is also a big league. If we just put it into Equilab, I mean, I have very little like forward equity, so I would probably reach um, something like this maybe king jack suited and then with queen 10 suited uh, he has less than 37 percent equity um, it's not even a break even call i mean he has no no reason to to, to make this break even call here um, so from my perspective very easy forward it's not a bounty tournament uh, so, yeah, if he has king queen suited, king jack suited, he of course has to call. But I think even with queen and suited here, um, he can just fold it. It's it's a close one though. But um, in hindsight, if you do these analyzes, you should find out. Okay, it's a fold. I mean, I'm not blaming him. It's definitely a tough spot here for him. But um, yeah, now we see it's 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 a clear fold. And when I'm not sure in these spots calling all ins, I rather stay on the safe side. Uh, maybe he put me on that I'm sometimes also re-jamming 10 nine suited, which I never will because I can just call and play with a nice hand. Okay, well, we somehow... Oh, sorry. Yeah, it again jumped. We have to continue here. Ace queen off. Yeah, easy raise call, no action. Um, Jack 10 suited, it's pretty much whatever. Since we're in position and our equitalization is insanely high, I would always advise just to call. Rejamming against a loose aggressive opponent is also fine. Uh, we bet and we flop a top pair and we easily go broke here. Um, if he check jams, we, yeah, he can have better hands, but he can also have 7-9, 6-9, queen jack, 10-9, um, so. Very easy. Broke. Um, pocket force. It's very close. It really depends on the opponent. This guy was pretty active so far, so I actually don't mind the rejam, which I did. And uh, yeah, he folded. Those are always the best hands to, to play it a bit more aggressively pre flop. Because we often get caught by ace king, ace queen, and then we. And we are at least flip flipping. Flip I was about to say flip calling. <laughs> Current flipping. Uh, flip calling. We are flip calling. So pocket jacks. No action. And the last hand for today for this student. 
nothing so much we can do. As orientation, same should be here. Um, as we had on the cutoff, right? We know roughly 27% 20 for the cutoff. Then we should go for like 24, 25% hijack. And then we go like 20 to 22% from MP. And if you have solved one sport for a certain position, you can always use that as an orientation point to at least have an idea which frequency you should play from a certain spot. All right, guys, this was today a little bit more of a quote unquote, let's go through as many hands as possible so you can grasp my thoughts uh, or my thought process and use that for your own game. Uh, see how I study spots, see how I attack the spots. And next time we are gonna have, I don't know if we're already, already gonna reach the final table, maybe more ICM considerations. We're gonna work a little bit more with Holy Embrace's calculator. Maybe we're also gonna have a post flop spot. So this was today a very heavy pre-flop spot. And I hope you guys picked something up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. Don't forget to join our Discord and then see you guys in part two. That was Ben's me for Race Your Edge. Ciao.